I'm dead. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's sorry, says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. I wanted it, and then... Buy our merch indeed. It shall, shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. All right. Huh? Here we go. Uh, you're going to have to announce it. I've... My computer is shut down. We are, yes, we're, we're, we're looking at, we look very cavernous. DJ Nick is moment. our can DJ. I so can. look like we're in a catacomb somewhere. <laughs> DJ Nick is I thought you DJ. liked that. You ah! thought, you thought it was uh, Friday and it actually, it's actually Dawes Day. Uh, DJ Nick has reserved uh, every Friday for the next couple of Fridays because they're going to be, Fridays are going to be Nick streams. And right now... There's this band called The Doors, and they had, they came up with this song called, was it American Prayer? Is that what it's called? Hold on, let me check. Let me check what Trello says. Uh, an American Prayer and, and Extended. Okay, so this is the extended version of a song called An American Prayer from the band The Doors from our DJ, DJ Nick. Let's go, dear listener.
What did you think of this song? <sighs> okay, I uh, lyrically, um, he was saying so many different things, which I'm actually really interested in hearing your breakdown of. But it had like this sort of vibe to it that was, I don't know, like it just made me want to take time to like sit down and write and think and process things. 100%. Yeah. And um, I'm going to have to actually screen share these lyrics because they're just so long. They were. And the the one that I had. the extended version. Here, guys, I'm going to screenshot this so you guys could follow along with the lyrics. Okay, so go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Yeah, so it was, like I said, I already said what I was going to say, that it was just really smooth, and I'm curious to break into the lyrics um, with you. Some of the stuff was just really, I don't know. And and he has a good voice for it, too. Like, it just made you feel, I don't know. It made me stop and, th- like, just think. And you know what it also reminded me of? Like, I don't know if it's his look because I was looking at the album cover. Do you remember we saw there was this movie where these people were essentially, like, trapped in this, um, I don't know. It seemed like it was like a sort of cult situation. Wait, it was a show we were watching? Yeah, I don't know. I think it was a movie. And like, they were like, there was these poles and they were like, they could get like, kind of like time warped and they were like stuck. Oh man, I wish I knew what it was because it was actually really interesting. Who were like, they? It just seemed like it was another one of those cult stories. I don't know. I, I'm not going to be able to who remember the, who enough. Who were the stars? Was it two guys? I don't remember. I just remember it being a group of people. And I remember them like they couldn't like leave this certain area because of the poles that were there. Do you remember anything about that? Oh, and then when they would go past it, they would blow up their heads and explode or something. I don't know. That was lost. That was a show lost. No, 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 no. It was not lost. Okay. So anyway, what what about it? Yeah, like it just reminded me, like the way that he was talking, and I think somebody else said it in the comment section, like the way that he was talking and whatever, it just kind of gave you this feel that like <laughs> we were in like some kind of cult. I'm pretty certain <laughs> that Amy, Amy's got it right. I'm pretty sure it's The Endless. Pretty sure that, that was the name of the, the movie. Because it was these two guys at the beginning. Uh, I think this and is it. Was it was this cult, and then they couldn't leave and all the rest of it. It was the endless. That is exact. Yeah, that was that. Yep, I'm pretty sure that you're... Yes, I think you're right. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I think you're right. Uh, Andre got it too. Yeah, so go ahead. Uh, so anyway, yeah. So it just kind of... Like his voice and the, st- the way that he was going about it just made me feel like I was sitting in one of those cult right. movements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it de- he did sound... He, he's... He's definitely one of those dudes that absolutely could have started a cult. I mean, <laughs> he, he technically did, right? But he didn't do it on purpose. You know what I'm, you yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, of course, dying that early, obviously, is always going to solidify your legend, unfortunately. Um, and I, I don't really know why that is, but, I mean, that's really what happens, right? I mean, that's pretty much what happens, or no? You, you basically become, you know... A divine being almost. Like he said something pretty crazy here when he said, uh, he said something about the wings where our shoulder blades used to be. Really? Right here. Right here. He says, death makes angels of us all and gives us wings where we had shoulders smooth as raven's claws. I mean. That's crazy. Yeah. Right. He can ride his ass off. Holy shit. Um. That line is just insane. Death makes angels of angels of us all and gives us wings where we had shoulders smooth as raven claw. And I think for me, wow. like what that means is, you know, uh, shoulders smooth as raven claws. A raven is a black bird of prey, and it's it's not a very nice Mm-mm. bird, mm-hmm. right? Uh, in contrast with an angel, and I think what he means is that's what happens when people die. You know. It's they get eulogized, so like they were a horrible raven, they were terrible, yeah. But all of a sudden, now they're an angel because they're dead, and then all the evidences of their uh non angelness or their raven likeness gets erased, and you just replace it with angel wings instead of that. And like, oh, now they're dead, so we gotta say all these crazy good things about them, like Colin Powell when Colin Powell died. I mean, what people always say that they're like, oh, you it's not a time to get political, oh, he's dead. I'm like, I don't care. Like, dude, you you went to the UN and lied, knowing you lied, to get us into a war with Iraq. Yeah, yeah. Which resulted in the deaths of hundreds of thousands of beautiful people. 
Uh, so I'm not going to turn you into an angel now that you're dead. Yeah. Like, and he's, and he's never publicly taken responsibility or repented for that. That's my thing. Like, you don't get to do shit like that. And then just because you're, you're dying now, I'm supposed to say, oh, well, you know, Colin Powell, he was the first black this. He was the first, hey, get the fuck out of here, bro. You're a horrible human being, dude. You went over there and, and uh, you gave the speech that guaranteed the death of all those people. I'm not going to turn you into a fucking angel. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, but don't you think that everybody is in that situation on a smaller scale? No, 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 I don't. I think I know that everybody makes mistakes, but there's a lot of people who, when they're when it's explo exposed, feel sincerely horrible about what was done. Um, but he's never come out and publicly said that he was he lied about that shit. He never came out and admitted it. He never came out and said he regrets his role in in massacring those people over there in in, in Iraq. So fuck him. Well, no, I see what you're saying on that, but I'm just saying like. Basically, we do this at everybody's funeral. We only talk about the person's good, even though we know that everybody's not perfectly good. Well, that's that's not true. What do you mean? Like I've been to, I've been to some, I've been to a lot of funerals, yeah. unfortunately, where people said, "Well, everybody knew so and so." Uh, but we I've, love, I've but, never been to any like that. I've never well, been. Well, one like of them, that. the one of the most recent funerals I went to, the the kid unfortunately blew himself away in a moment of despair and all of his family was there and he was he was the badass in the family and everybody was like you know that's how he was and you know, but we loved him anyway and blah 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 and everybody was you know and everybody was smiling was like yeah we loved him we didn't care so no i don't i don't i don't i don't think that i mean i i think you know like for example like if if i was to die and people would eulogize me i don't think everybody would say only positive things i think people would say look vin was moody vin could flip on you out of nowhere but vin also deeply cared about people and blah 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 i think people would say i think people would say both but regardless if you've got something on your record like you brought an entire country into war you lied and got a cut and a cut. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you out because of COVID. Good for you. That's what you get, bro. You're lucky that you got to die probably surrounded by friends, families, and doctors instead of like that six-year-old Iraqi kid that ended up uh, in a ditch because uh, we bombed his house and the shrapnel severed the uh, veins in his neck and he went and bled out in the ditch. So, you know, anyway, uh, there, he this guy says a lot. He He's saying a whole lot, and I think he's trying to figure out, like, how Christian, uh, not necessarily Christianity, but probably Christianity, but religion itself um, interfaces with the realities of life, death, and the Western world, I think. You know, do you know the warm progress under the stars? Do you know we exist? Have you forgotten the keys to the kingdom? Have you been born yet? And are you alive? Let's yeah. reinvent the gods, all the myths of the ages. Celebrate symbols from deeper elder forests. We need great golden copulations. This guy, sex is a solution for everything for this guy. <laughs> this is what Amy would say at my funeral. I'd say, Vin walked on the sun. Oh, man. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, there's so <laughs> many things I could say. There are so many things so I could say. So many things I could say. Um, so, yeah, yeah, like, that's what I like about this guy. Like, you know, all right, I'm going to let the... There are very few people in the world who are truly, truly deep. There are people in the world that want to make you think that they're deep. <laughs> yep. But they're really not. Yeah. Yes. But this guy, in my view, is not a pretender. This guy is doing a lot of hard thinking mm -hmm. about himself, the world around him, um, philosophy, religion, his own yeah, inner but... drives. He, like, he, he, it's, he just seems like somebody who's done a... See, for me, when I say so-and-so is deep, I don't mean that they can use a lot of quadrosyllabic words. What I mean is it's clear that that person has sat and thought through 
this particular subject mm -hmm. and has, you know, beaten all the fruit off the tree possible, mm -hmm. you know, and looked at them from like, when I listen, like, like when, if you get a text from AT, like you can tell that he's, Yes. And then and then when you respond to him, the next thing he talks about on the subject is some modified version that takes XYZ thing into account. That's what I mean. Like mm -hmm. that's what I mean by a deep thinker. It's just somebody that has the patience yeah. to think through the different angles on any given subject, whether you agree, disagree, whatever. And that to me is is this work right here solidifies that to me about this dude, is is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense. I mean, I think that like when you're listening to his stuff, like some people want you to think that they're, they're very intelligent and he doesn't even give me that feel to me. He just feels like he's just having his, a exactly. stream of consciousness. Like yes. I used to work with this guy that honestly, he annoyed the hell out of everybody. I think he was a very lonely person and he had so much thinking that he did. And he wasn't like, he, he was like, one of the only men that we worked with that didn't even seem like he noticed sexual stuff. Like if a girl came in and like really short shorts, he didn't even notice it. He was too busy just rattling off talking about all this different stuff. And I always thought that that was really interesting. Um, and like he, man, he was always talking, but, but he did, like you said, you could tell that he had thought about a lot of things and he wanted to talk about all the things that he thought about, man, he would have, he would have loved sitting down to talk to you. I wish that you guys would have been able to talk because I think you both would have gotten some enjoyment out Didn't of the situation. Did he go to the Bible study that one time? No, 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 no. He was an older guy. He was probably in his sixties. Um, but everybody hated him because he, he would just, you know, like when somebody doesn't have a conversation, they're just like talking. Yeah. He was like that. He just talked and he was so smart that you just, you really didn't have any input anyway. So, and he just made your breaks feel like you didn't have them when he would just talk the entire time. Oh my gosh. Like, Nobody oh could no. tell him, like, bro, shut the fuck up. Nobody would say it. They'd come down and they'd be like, yo, Jim, Jim sat at the table with me. You're like, oh. We, we'd much rather, we'd much <laughs> rather, uh, we'd much rather talk about him when he's not around. <laughs> they weren't, it was just. tell him to his face and shut yeah, the Well, up. yeah. Nobody could, nobody had the heart to say it to him, but everybody was just like, like they just, the they wanted to you to understand. No, they back. really weren't like saying a bunch of shit. They were just saying, I didn't get to rest. <laughs> and that's all that they would say. That's. Yeah, I know, babe. I get it. I get it. I get it. They, somebody should have said it to him directly. I think somebody actually did, but it was very hostile by the time they ended up Your saying guys something. This culture is so strange. This is not my culture. This was the, the workplace, but. Anyway. There's no culture in the workplace? Yeah, but you said your guys is. You're making it look like it's like me and my family. Like, this is not... Nobody I knew was there. It was just no, the I'm culture at the native job. I'm talking Mainers. Yeah, native I Mainers, guess. That's your guys', is, that's your I guys guess. little thing. In the yeah. Movie. But anyway. Uh, I love this dude. This is, a ten, I, this is actually a 10 for me. This is actually a 10 for me. Mm. I'm absolutely going to... I'm probably going to memorize this. What? No bullshit. I'm probably going to memorize this. Top to bottom. The extended version. That's how important I think this is. This is the first time we've done almost 2,500 songs. This is the first time I've ever said, I'm going to memorize every word of this. Yeah, song. I've never, yeah. I've never said that before, but I'm absolutely going to. Uh, I'm going to go with a 9.6. It's a 10 with an asterisk for me because this is the first time I've ever done that before, but I am. There you are, dear listener. Hell, I might shoot a remix video of it. That's you what I was thinking. Know. I'm you like, <laughs> Thoughts from Vin, then I can actually one day look like an intelligent person. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Babe, stop Instead it. Of being a dumb buck. Stop hmm? it. What you mean? Nobody thinks that you're unintelligent. I just, Ridiculous. What did I say unintelligent? You, just, you said then I'll look like an intelligent person. Well, the difference between being unintelligent and looking intelligent. All, All right, you guys. One more song for you guys. Celebration of the Lizard. Have an argument for everything. Vin out. Sorry out. Gone, unless you're some horrible worker, in which case she'll just talk about you behind your back for years. No, I didn't talk about it. Commercial break, we shall have it done. Done, done. I might have. I'm Vin. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. As Sorry says... 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute.
And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed, and a child shall lead them. What, honey? <laughs> what are you doing? You're supposed to be in bed. Come here. Your bed's wet? Yes. You want to say hi to the people? Yes. Okay, say hi, people. Hi, people. He's sick. Everybody's sick. All the kids are sick. We've got... It's been a long day. So your bed is wet? I saw that your your dump your drink dumped all over it. Is that what happened? Your water? Mom, where's the... All the bedding is in the closet. Okay. Yeah. Closet? His closet. His in, closet. That, in that gray bin. Did you have fun with Johan? Yeah. Yeah? Say hi, Amy Lee. Hi, Amy Lee. Say, what's up, DJ Nick? What's up, DJ Nick? He sounds so sick. Ryan? Yep. All right, buddy, it's time for bed. Say bye to the people. Bye to the people. Okay. I love you. Have a hug? Okay, we should be starting momentarily. Go, go, go. Go see your honey. Mommy. Are you going to kiss mommy? Okay, kiss mommy. I love you. I'll see you in the morning. What did you just take? Let me see. What's in your hand? No, you can't No, no, no. That. Put that down. Put you that criminal. Down. Put that down right there. <laughs> you criminal. Suck for the law. Put All right, it down, Yarasu. Put, put that down. You'll have candy tomorrow, not right now. Oh, you already put it down? Okay, hey. go with Johan. Good night. We love you. I love you. Yeah, suck it up. No crying in baseball. Go ahead, go with Johan. <laughs> Yara Sula, you have to go. It's alright. All you right. have to go. You're alright. You gotta go, bro. <laughs> All those tears. That's because we wouldn't let him I have a candy and he stole. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, it's one of those candies that's like. It was, it was way too braces. hard. Yeah, pull, pull out, out your, your braces. braces. Candy, so. Yes. Hey. Andre said, it was such a beautiful girl. What a beautiful girl. <laughs> <laughs> that one's a little boy. <laughs> That's a little Krishna, people. He even asked. All right. Uh, okay. So we have the doors. Celebration of the lizard next. Yes. Uh and it is our final song, Avita Zane, dear listener. This was uh, the final pick for DJ Nick. DJ Nick. Don't forget to thank your DJ for making this show possible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like on Fortnite. Let's thank go. The, thank the bus driver. Ah, fuck the bus Thank driver. the DJ. Wow. 
Lions in the street and roaming, dogs in heat, rabid, foaming, a beast caged in the heart of a city. The body of his mother rotting in the summer ground, he fled the town, went down south and crossed the border, left the chaos and disorder back there over his shoulder. One morning he awoke in a green hotel with a strange creature groaning beside him. Sweat oozed from its shiny skin. Is everybody in? The ceremony is about to begin. Wake up! You can't remember where it was. Had this dream stopped? The snake was pale gold, glazed and shrunken. We were afraid to touch it. The sheets were hot, dead prison. And she was beside me, old, she's now young. Her dark red hair, the white soft skin. Now, run to the mirror in the bathroom, look, she's coming in here. I can't live through each slow century of her moving. I let my cheeks slide down the cool, smooth tile. Feel the good, cold, stinging blood, the smooth. Once I had a little game, I like to crawl back in my brain. I think you know the game I mean. I mean the game called Go Insane. Now you should try this little game. Just close your eyes, forget your name. Forget the world, forget the people, and we'll erect a different steeple. This little game is fun to do. Just close your eyes, no way to lose. And I'm right here, I'm going to release control. We're breaking Beast car, 
Don't stop to speak or look around. Your gloves and fan are on the ground. We're getting out of town. We're going on the run. And you're the one I want to come.
For seven years I dwelt in the loose palace of exile, playing strange games with the girls of the island. Now I have come again to the land of the fair and the strong and the wise. Brothers and sisters of the pale forest, children of night, who among you will run with the hunt? Now night arrives with her purple legion. Retire now to your tents and to your dreams. Tomorrow we enter the town of my birth. I want to be ready. Yep, yep. Encore, right. do you want more? Cooking raw with the Brooklyn bra. Okay, um, okay, guys, there was a, you guys are going to be, you're going to feel the way I feel. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Check this out. It's around here somewhere. Hold on, stay with me, stay with me, dear listener. Listen out for that organ now. It's around here somewhere. Listen out for the organ. Here's the organ that's coming in. Back deep into the brain. Stay with me, dear listener. And in the labyrinth of streams beneath Quiet, unearthly presence Of nervous hill dwellers in the gentle hills around Reptiles abounding Fossils Where are the... Yeah, we feel like you feel. Huh? We're breaking through. Hold on. All oh, right there. Okay, listen to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys hearing that? Watch. Okay, what year was that? You hear that? That's perfect. I'm gonna t turn that up as loud as I can. It's gonna blow your mind, ladies and gentlemen. 1970. 1970, watch this. Okay, 1970, watch. Control. We're breaking through. Oh, 
Okay, it's just a scale run. It's just a scale run, says uh, says uh, Amy Lee Forever. However, there's a classic Jay-Z song called... I saw somebody Money, say Jay-Z. Cash, Hoes. Listen very closely, dear listener. Listen to this, dear listener. <laughs> Jim Morrison? I'm oh, so oh, mean... impressed that Overshadow Sean knew where I was going with this. Because <laughs> I was on mute and I said, holy shit! You stole that Swiss Beats! You stole it! That should that credit should go to Ray Manzarek. I'm gonna Google Ray Manzarek and Swiss Beats. And see and see if uh they, they my man credit? gets the credit. My man gets the credit. That's what I'm telling you. The musicianship in this band is insane. Um, it really is. It really mm. is. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by that. <clears throat> uh, remembers working. Tech Nine remem remembers working with Ray Manzarek. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel they stole. They stole that. But anyway. Uh, I saw your face catch that, Vin. Yeah, I, I and Sean, Sean, now, Sean and I have now reached another level of brotherhood. <laughs> for him to catch that that quickly, that is, that's absolutely amazing. He's my brother for life now. Okay. All right, guys. So, what was going on with you in this song? Uh, again, it was, it was really chill. I liked the way that he, you know, I, I didn't even know what we were talking about. I felt like we were going through... I kind of felt like dizzy in the lyrics. Really? Yeah, the song itself. Like disoriented? Like, well, even the music like just made me feel like I was spiraling down this whatever. Like, I don't even know. And I didn't know what he was talking about. Did you get like a theme from it? Well, I keep hearing from everybody that he, he himself is the Lizard King. Really? Yeah. So I that was like... One of, I guess that was one of the nicknames that he had for himself, I guess, was that he was the hmm. Lizard King. No? Okay. That's, at least that's what Daniel said, and Daniel's never st steered me wrong. He's never steered us wrong. This was uh, from their record, Absolutely Live. So I think he's talking about, maybe he's talking about himself and how he's working through everything. You said what? He's working through everything? Like, he, he's just talking about his life and, yep. and where he came from and, and where he is now and where he's going. Oh. Lions in the street and roaming dogs in heat. Rabbit foaming a beast caged in the heart of a city. The body of his mother rotting in the summer ground. He fled the town. Oh. You know, like, that's a pretty crazy way to yeah. say, you know, he's brought up in the hood. And, and, and I, again, I don't know if his mother died early or what. Yeah. Um... What's his name again? The dude from the well, I mean, Jim Morrison. Yeah, I think that it doesn't matter when your mother dies. I think that it's always gonna feel. Honey, just put that in our room. Oh, okay. Thanks. Can you just play with him and tell him to be quiet? We got. Like He's minutes. trying to leave. I don't care. Oh. Okay. You want to earn fifty dollars? <laughs> <sighs> that he doesn't deserve, in my opinion. But go ahead. <laughs> a lot. A lot doesn't agree with you. <laughs> uh he went down to. We're trying to teach the girls to negotiate. And Zoe came up with this amazing, brilliant argument that I said had no flaws in it. I agree. But uh, I agree. she got overruled somehow. So there's that. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. I did everything on my end to, to make it work for her. But Look, so I put in Jim Morrison, Mother's yeah, Death. Yeah. And the first thing that pops up is, why did Jim Morrison lie about his parents being dead? What? So he lied about his parents dying? Andy Morrison recalls that his mother, Clara, who died last year, took him to a Doors concert in Washington, D.C. and asked to see Jim, but he refused to meet with her, and she drove home in tears. That was in 2006. Oh, my gosh. I've never heard of The Morrison surmised that Jim's hostility was really designed to shield them from uh, too much attention. Oh. So. Well, I mean. He, 
Th- that's fascinating. So if this is autobiographical, he's still. I disagree. He, <laughs> I no, I'm saying, I'm saying if it's autobiographical, you know, he's still going with that mythology that yeah. his mother was dead when in reality she was very much alive. I'm saying I disagree with what he did. Like if he was trying to shield her from too much attention, I mean, meet with her and explain that to her. Don't let her drive home in tears and not talk to her. He didn't meet with her. So if it's really just to shield her from too much attention, wouldn't you at least tell her on the side that's what's going on? Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. These rock star people, they're, they just, they just function on a different foot. Their logic is different. You know how sometimes like we talk to Johan and we're like, yo, but like you could look at him and tell like, yo, he means it and it oh, makes yeah. sense to him. Oh, absolutely. Or Dorian, Dorian more than Johan. Dorian does a lot of shit where I'm like, what the fuck? But it makes complete sense to him. So I don't know. Maybe he was just doing that to, to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't know. But that's what it looks like to me. Okay, so autobiograph. Oh, okay. He went down south and crossed the border. My word. I have to say that if I wasn't actually dead and one of my kids put that in a song about me and the way that he wrote it, the body of his mother rotting in the summer ground. Yeah. It's such a morbid way of describing it. I thought like, you know, if like when my meme passed away, I, I was so bothered by that. And I was really bothered by the fact that they put her in the ground because I felt like Meme shouldn't be in the ground. So like I, but you know, a lot of people in my family think that cremation is not good. Or at least at that point, they thought it was really bad. Yeah. So uh, I would have felt much better about her being cremated and, you know, spread the ashes thing, but the, the body in the ground. And I kept like, it took me a really long time and it happened every single time we lost a pet. I would have nightmares and it bothered me for like, years literal years knowing that they were decomposing in the ground it just really bothered me so like if he like at first when i read that i just thought like okay he's just having a hard time dealing with the fact that this person that he loved is just like you know especially if you're like an overly vivid person like visually like 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 what you think about sure it's just hard but then to find out his mom wasn't even dead and he worded it like that i don't know yo i think that's a little bit (laughs) Again, I'm taking it um, autobiographically, mm-hmm. but he did spew out that <laughs> he did spread that mythology that his parents are no longer with us. <laughs> One morning, he awoke in a green hotel with a strange creature groaning beside him. Sweat oozed from its shining skin. Is everyone in? Is everybody in? The ceremony is about to begin. So, do you think this is when he's like coming into the idea that he's the Lizard King? Well, I think the strange creature next to him is obviously some groupie that they've had some drug-addled night together. and Sweat oozed from its shining skin. Ew, what a gross way of wording this. <laughs> what do you mean? Sweat oozed from its shining skin. I mean... With a strange creature but groaning there's beside a, him? That, there's that, that sort of provocative slash disgust type, uh, you know, paradigm that happens with men and women when he boy the woman you know when it's too easy i hate to say this but there is that there is a latent resentment that happens there i mean dudes aren't going to say it sorry boys i let the cat out the bag but it's both you know she's shining so that's ooh, but sweat is oozing Ugh. and oh that's the that's the that's the dichotomy. That's the draw. I'm sorry. I don't know how to tell you, dear listener. He goes on to explain the snake was pale gold, glazed and shrunken. We were afraid to touch it. The I sheets were hot, junk. dead poisons. That's what? his junk. Yeah, the sheets were hot, dead prisons. And she was beside me. Old. She's no young. Her dark white hair. He said red, though, skin. in the song. Hmm? He said red hair. It said white here, but he said red in the song. Yeah, but see right there, the sheets were hot, dead prisons. And she was beside me. I told you. She. Oh, my gosh. She. Oh, my gosh. And to him, she is gross. So, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, my gosh. Now run to the mirror in the bathroom. Look, she's coming in here. I can't live through each slow century of her moving. I let my cheeks slide down the cool, smooth tile. I have to say, when he did that part in the song, like, did you, I literally pictured, like, the, (laughs) 
the thing happening. And I felt like I could feel he, a cold He wants her to go. Thing. Yeah. That's the disgust part. He wants her gone. Oh so, my gosh. I mean. I have, this makes me so uncomfortable. What makes you uncomfortable? I just, if I ever was in a situation like this, and I, and I feel bad for anybody who ever was, like, to be in a situation I, where you. I know, Jim. I'm sorry, bro. I feel bad for you. That's what you're talking about? You're feeling bad for Jim Morrison? No, I'm feeling bad for the girl. All, all important. Obviously. Oh, you feel bad for the girl. Of course you do. Go ahead. He wants her gone right after that? Yeah. And he's I mean, explaining her and describing her like this? Well, he said shining. He said she was shining. I don't know what you want, but. I don't know what you want. It, 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 I keep trying to tell you. This is how it is. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Continue. Amy, the reason it makes me so uncomfortable, Amy's like, sorry, is blushing. And she has how many kids? That's because I'm having kids in a situation where the person doesn't want me gone after I, after I give myself to them. Like, I just, that, that idea to me is so uncomfortable that you could you could put that out there like that and then like and and I could oh man what that you could put that out there like that and what well I can I can like I've never been in either one of those situations but I can put myself in the shoes of both of those parties and I could see that happening I could see like after you're done you're like okay just get out now I can well, see that how, that's not how it is but then also what like you're not saying like okay I like, leave now. It's just you tell it's body uh, language. It's okay, like, yeah, you know. you're probably talking about your experiences. I've also heard of people that said as soon as a person was like they were sneaking out, trying to grab their shit and get out of there before the person realized they were gone. I mean, I agree. Happens. I agree, but again, that's different than get out. I think I think having sex with somebody and then immediately saying get out is, oh, my word. is, is pretty terrible. But that's generally not how it works. I mean, that's not how it's working with him. He's like, no, he stayed the night, but he like, wants her to leave. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, even if the even if the person doesn't kick you out, but in, internally they want to kick you out of there. Like, that's still very uncomfortable. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I get you. And it must be weird, like, if you don't, know, like, if you've been in that situation where you caught those vibes from somebody and you knew they wanted you to get out, and then you land in a situation similar to that again, and you're kind of like, should I stay? Should I Or you can wait till you're married. Leave? Yeah. You can wait till the person commits their life to you and only you, and then maybe you won't go through that. Yeah. Experience. I mean, I agree. I agree. Uh, anyway, all right. You know, but, you know, or not, that's fine. Uh, benefits, if you don't want to do it that way, that's cool. That'll benefit men, though. The the sexual revolution has benefited men exponentially. exponentially. <laughs> way more than it's benefited women. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. It's true. It's true. That That's why I always tell women, like, listen, anytime there's, like, any pro-woman type of anything, if you see dudes, I'm talking about straight dudes, if you see straight dudes get it behind it with full-throated support, believe you me, just think logically about why they would be so supportive. I mean, look, if all these male feminists were really walking around, how the fuck did Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton then? <laughs> how come we don't have a, a female president yet? <laughs> all these all these male feminists walking around in America that are all pro-woman. It's always the same thing. They want the woman to have sexual liberation. Yeah, I understand. I understand why, brothers. I understand why. I'm snitching on you tonight. <laughs> Most of the time that dudes are carrying that banner, it's because it benefits us in a lot of ways. Believe you me. Currently, we have a situation in which we can have commitmentless, uh, consequence-free sex. And uh, if anything bad happens, we have ways of taking care of that situation so I don't have to pay child support. Yay! Go women! That's what's happening. I'm sorry, but that's... That's how most dudes are. I don't know what else to tell you. <clears throat> you shouldn't try this little game. Just close your eyes. Forget your name. Forget the world. Forget the people. And we'll all erect a different steeple. This little game is fun to do. And just close your eyes. No way to lose. And I'm right here. I'm going to release control. We're breaking through. Which is interesting. Because he also had that in a song. Break on through to the other side. Which... 
That makes me think of DMT. Right. Well, I was just about to say that's another thing that happens with uh, DMT is when you really like get launched out into the you know ectosphere, whatever that is. Um, they call that having a breakthrough. So it looks like he was really into drug culture. So it looks like maybe he doesn't want the girl completely gone because he's doing some probably LSD or peyote with her. Peyote, whatever you call it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I would just ignore it. <laughs> um, <laughs> way back deep into the brain. See, all the brothers, all the brothers are supporting me. Yeah. Sean is like, 100% truth. <laughs> See, they knew I was right. <laughs> <laughs> way back deep into the brain, back where there's never any pain, and the rain falls gently on the town and over the heads of us, of all of us. And in the labyrinth of streams beneath the quiet, unearthly peace of gentle hill dwellers in the gentle hills around, reptiles abounding, fossils, caves, cool air heights. Is he basically saying each house repeats a mold? So he's saying this is happening all over the place. But I think when they're on peyote or LSD or whatever, they're going like back, 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 and reptiles, fossils, caves. Like, these are our previous ancestors, depending on what paradigm you're looking through. Mm -hmm. So it's like taking you back in time before everything went bad and yeah. complicated. It says, uh, if it says back where there's never any pain. So it looks like it, the drug kind of reverts you backwards and you're going backwards. So he's on a trip with this with this girl. I mean, it's he's oh. saying, run with me. Let's run. Go Some ahead. outlaws live by the side of the lake. The minister's daughter's in love with the snake. Yeah. Who lives in a well by the side of the road. Wake up, girl. We're almost home. Yeah. We should see the gates by morning. We should see the inside by evening. So. He says, I am the lizard king. Yeah, he explicitly says Yeah, that. okay. I'm saying. I could do anything. But I think, I think again, it's like, I think the li I think that's, I think he's, he's speaking like hot. He's talking about sex, sexuality, and drugs, and the, the confluence of the two. Because there is the. You know, the endorphin, whatever, whatever, whatever people want to call it, where it, the sex does have that, like, intoxicating type of thing. And I think there's some, Amy would know this, like, you know, traditions or belief systems where sexuality and then drug use is part of the religion to get to a certain place. So th that's always been a combination. Like, if you look at, like, in the New Testament times, right, you go to the whatever, pay up, temple prostitutes have some uh, opioids and all that. And that's why sorcery is called pharmakia mm -hmm. because there was, you know, so there, so it, it's, it's very, very like esoteric on the outside looking in, like, no man, you're just a rock star with, you know, a high libido and you know, yada, yada, yada. And you like doing drugs. I'm like, yeah, you could, you could just, you could just completely dismiss it. I mean, and I, I understand that kind of cynicism, but I think like, I think sexuality and drug use to him was, was some, he was searching for something and he was searching for some portal to go to another world, I think. Yeah. And, and I think that yeah. he would experience it momentarily in some form of sexuality and some forms of drug use, Yeah. but he couldn't get it consistently. And so that was, that's the torment and that's the, the back yeah. and forth. And I thought that, I just thought it was very, very brilliantly done. I really did. I, I lyrically, there's so much more that could be said, but it was just, a lot of real, real life stuff at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, so overall, like it was, I don't know. Like, I literally feel like I've been saying the same thing on every one of his songs. There's a smoothness to all of them. And this one, like I said, made me feel like a little, very smooth, like dizzy the way that the music was going. Um, and then the, like lyrically and stuff, like I felt like, I don't know. I don't know. But now that you broke down the lyrics, I mean, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. But I was picturing, I, I think, well, at the beginning of the stream, Nick was saying, like, a lot of this is metaphorical, blah, blah, blah. And I think, like, this phase of my life is very hard for me to think metaphorically. I think more concretely. Mm -hmm. um, where before I used to think more metaphorically. But anyway, so th this song, Until You Broke It Down, like, was very confusing. <laughs> But yeah, I see where he's going. I definitely see how it's how it's um, about himself and stuff like that. So this one, I don't necessarily disagree. It's like that preacher said to the guy that kept, you know, he, he was he was he was just going through the city, <laughs> and the preacher said to him, "Geez, man, by how many gates must you enter paradise?" 
when I saw that, I was like, that was life changing for me as far as looking at sex and sexuality and all the all the rest of it. But it was just a very brilliant way to put it. Jeez, man, by how many gates must you enter paradise? So there is something transcendental happening when sex and sexuality is activated. Mm -hmm. um, people want to act like we're just animals and it's chemical reactions and all the rest of it. It's like they're full of shit. Mm -hmm. there, there's something like indescribable about what's happening in the, in the sexual act that, um, mm -hmm. that I think he understood and he tapped into. And because of his position in society, he was able to really explore, as it were. Um, but obviously, I think, you know, he, he, he didn't take the right direction from a Christian uh, world. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, brilliant guy, brilliant song. 9.4 for me. 9.2 for me. Hmm. 9.2. All right. There you go, dear listener. This was Fridays brought to you by the big homie DJ, DJ Nick. Nick. Gang, gang, gang. Everybody say thank you to DJ Nick for bringing us this wonderful crazy strange esoteric dmt peyote inspired goodness <laughs> now the rest of you this is not a a, a recommendation or a uh, accommodation of dmt or any other such <laughs> your discretion is advised hmm? all right dear listener we are done uh if you are politically inclined i have a Panel discussion in a half an hour, actually 20 minutes, on um, the Second Amendment and the current crisis in America and what can be done or cannot be done about it. To be honest with you, the more and more I... Th well, actually. So anyway, that's going to be on the other channel. If you know, you know. Shout out to the big homie Nick. Shout out also. I just want to give a good round of applause to Sister Sori. She's absolutely sick as a dog, and uh, I gained a lot of fucking respect for you. That was that was that was some that was some team team guy shit. Good job, really really good job. Hopefully Thank you, now Vinny. you can just lay down and go to sleep, inshallah. Um, shout out to the big homie DJ Nick, who apparently um, no AT. I won't be there. I've literally been sick for days. Who apparently someone so. loves very dearly. I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to Nick and uh, uh, kill it. She's like no. <laughs> You shall not. I said, I will not tell you it's, that I'm sick anymore if you do that. Yeah. She was like, I will never tell you again. <laughs> even though communication is the number one thing you <laughs> beg me for, I will threaten even less communication with you <laughs> if you cancel Nick's stream. So I'm like, oh, okay. So my wife is threatening not to share things with me, her husband, for the sake of another man. That's great. <laughs> oh, Having said that, dear listener, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Listener, that's all right. That's all right. You guys have been talking on Patreon for how many years? <laughs> it's been years, right? Uh, you know, I can't, I can't be No, he has it. the secret email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's got the secret email, whatever. You you got, you got, guys all have that world over there at Patreon. I'm just, whatever, whatever. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you very much. You guys are all here. I do salute you, though. Uh, 